Regalia is made possible in part by Bernina of Oklahoma City, providers of quality precision sewing machines. And by Four Child Society, designers of native apparel, t-shirts, decals, and more. And by generous contributions from viewers like you. Welcome back to Making Regalia with me, Joaquin Lone Lodge, here in Concho, Oklahoma, home of the Southern Cheyenne, Southern Rapaho tribes, my tribes. And once again, I'm proud to uh, bring you another episode. And today, we're going to be doing a men's traditional bustle. Now, I've been doing bustles uh, uh, pretty much since I was 14 years old. Uh, I started off doing uh, men's fancy dance bustles. Um, I started working on my, my personally own bustles. Um, I, I learned from different people and watching different styles and stuff. And today, you know, I'm going to show you from ground up how to construct a bustle. So we're going to do, um, um, we're actually going to cut the stem, uh, add the extension, um, add the bottoms, um, actually do a little bit of like uh, um, thread work with it. Uh, but I'm going to show you how my style is done. Now, I know I'm not the best bustle market maker in the world out there, but you know, I'm just gonna show you how I do it. And hopefully the tips I show you here, um, you know, you can take it with you and you know, go with it and helps you out like making your own bustles. So, uh, let me get started with the traditional bustle. There's, you know, a couple different styles of traditional bustles out there. Uh, you have the men's traditional contemporary, which is more elaborate, kind of a bigger style of bustle. Uh, today, we're going to be working with uh, kind of an older style of bustle. It's going to be the more round uh, bustle. It's kind of smaller, but it's more traditional, more kind of the older style. Uh, what I'm going to be working with today uh, is we've actually got some golden eagle feathers. And this is actually from my friend, uh, one of my good brothers, uh, Matt Little Creek out there. He's uh, Ojibwe, and um, he, asked, he asked me to actually um, make this bustle for him. I made a couple of them for him in the past. Uh, he never paid me on them, but hopefully he pays me on this one. So um, I'm kind of putting you on blast out there, Matt. I'm just kidding. You know, I'm only kidding. Uh, but uh, here we go. We're going to start from the ground up on how to do this. So what we're going to be starting with is uh, the bare base eagle feather, um, and you can actually use this, you know, like uh, if you're working with uh, turkey spikes, um, like chicken spikes, anything. But feathers are pretty much all similar in in their shape and their uh, texture. You'll see, like uh, you'll have the sim here, and basically this is actually hollow. So what we're going to be doing is uh, I'm going to chop the very end of this and we're going to add an extension to here. Now, um, depending on how big you want your bustle, is, uh, that's what you're going to use your extension for. Uh, the bigger the extension, the bigger the bustle, the larger it will be. Uh, this one, since it's very old style, kind of like just, you know, kind of like more traditional, I'm only going to go from here and measure from like the stem right, right where the feathers start and go like three inches down. I'm going to give a uh, put my extension right in here and there's a lot of different uh, techniques on actually how to actually put the extension in. Some people put the extension as far as they can go and then they'll fill it with Elmer's glue and you know I've done that before and when I first started out doing that I used to do that all the time um, but it, it actually was very hard to get through this stem and now I've learned a new technique which actually it's a whole lot easier. Um, so I don't really do that too much. Uh, I'm going to show you a faster way to do it and um, all the bustles that I've done in the past, I've, I, I use this technique and I don't really have too much of a problem with it. So I'm kind of reliant on this now. You know, it's, it's a little bit faster pace. So um, here we go. I'm going to show you how to do this. So right at the bottom, you know, what we're going to do is I'm just going to measure like from here to here and then I'm just going to chop this off. So take my trusty ruler, flip this around. Look at the bottom of the feather. Okay, three inches. So I'm gonna go a little bit above three inches. Um, chop off, I'm just gonna go two and mark it right there. Now, when you're working with feathers like this, you know, like these little stems will get all over the place. You know, and it's pretty much easy. That's all you gotta do is just cut it once um, and you know, drop them anywhere. But the thing is, you know, like, when I work through all these feathers, I have them like all over my floor and it's kind of a mess. So you have to always vacuum all the time. Plus, you know, if they're brand new feathers like eagle feathers, sometimes you have a lot of plumage and you have to vacuum that up. 
So I've got that. And now I've got, you know, my dowel rod. Uh, I usually, I, I used to get these, you know, real long ones, you know, from Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, I found that Walmart actually has these 3.8 dowel rods in a pack. Um, you can buy them for like $2 and I think you get 12 of them. So to cut costs and stuff, this is a kind of a better deal for me. Now, if you see, when I take my dowel rod, I insert into like uh, the little, um, the hollow part of the, the, uh, the, the feather, you can see it, it's kind of gives a little leeway because it's not, it's kind of loose. And so what I want to do is I want to give that a little bit more stiffness. So the other part that I use a lot is I use your trusty masking tape. Masking tape is perfect for this. It, it's the perfect job for it. And, you know, like I said in the past, I've noticed people that, you know, a long time ago, I, my uncles and people I used to look up to and whatnot for making bustles, they used to fill this full of glue, which is a good idea. You know, it, it keeps it pretty stiff. But if you ever take these down or rebuild them, it is a pain. And sometimes you'll damage the stem. Um, so what I've done is like to give it a little stiffness is I'll wrap this dowel rod with masking tape. That way, you know, you can get a perfect fit. And all I'm going to do is just kind of jam it in there. And if you see, it gives it more stability. So it's almost there. I want to get maybe another round on there. And what we're looking is to, you know, make it perfectly flush. So there. Now it's perfect. Good fit, you know, it's a good solid fit, you know, you don't see it rocking back and forth. That's the kind of where you want it to get to. Now, the other part is I'm, I'm actually not going to use any glue. I'm going to use my masking tape again. Um, what I want to do is actually get this perfectly flush. Uh, what I mean by flush is, you know, I want it to, if you kind of see, there's kind of a rough edge where it goes down. I want it to almost angle down and make it perfectly flush. And the best way I know how to do it is just take my masking tape and then roll it. So all I'm doing is going over, just like so, and I'll do it one more time just to get that groove out of there. And the reason why I want to do that is get that groove out of there is, um, you know, some people use yarn to actually decorate the stems. I use a lot of tape. Um, the tape, you know, I want it to get flush because if it has that little groove in there, sometimes it can uh, make little, like, uh, um, I guess, wrinkles in your tape job. And, you know, I want to get this as, as, as good as possible. So, I keep doing that until I feel, you know, it's almost flush and now I can work with my tape. So now that we got, you know, like uh, um, our stem flush, that, you know, the best way I can feel like, you know, it, that I, I don't feel like when I do the tape, it's going to cause any wrinkles. You know, all I'm going to do is just measure down and I want to measure, you know, like just about three inches. And if you look, Right about three inches, that's just perfectly where I want it. Um, now, working with eagle feathers, you know, I'm going to make this one uniform uh, where all these feathers are all going to be like three inches all the way across, just from, from like measuring from this fluff. So, um, taking, uh, take in mind that I'm going to use this one as a reference to reference all, all the other feathers. So, they're all going to be, the stem will actually equal to three inches. So, I'm just going to cut around. I don't want to cut, you know, use all my strength. Sometimes you might break the dowel rod. So what I like to do is I just like to, you know, just roll it so I get a pretty good round. And then when I feel it's weak enough, I just break it in half. So now that I've got it done, you know, I got my extension in there. It's, you know, pretty sturdy. And the masking tape is going to hold it in place. So from here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, go ahead and tape it. And then from there, we're going to actually add the, um, the, my bottom. Uh, my bottom is actually a loop uh, from here to here, so that way we can intertwine it with uh, a shoestring. Um, the shoestring will hold it all together when we all lace everything up. So, I'm going to spill a little trick in one of my trades. Uh, I use a lot of vinyl tape. This vinyl tape is, uh, is it works perfect, it's very bright, and I'm going to spill one of my trade secrets here on the show. Um, a lot of people ask me where I get my tape from. And I, I do a lot of tape jobs as far as bustle works and stuff. And if you can see behind me, like all that I, I did with vinyl tape. Um, and the cool part is the way I do it is, um, I'm going to jump in front of, like real quick, is um, I create a template uh, when I do my tape jobs. Uh, once I do a template, I use like an old shish kebab stick or something and I practice on these. You know, I kind of like figure out what my color combination is 
And you know, there's other styles you can do. You can actually do steps, make, you know, like diamonds and tape jobs. But you know, I use, for doing a diamond, I actually use several different like uh, uh, templates. But the reason why I use this is that I, I make them perfect. Every one of them is actually gonna equal. So once you get your one template done, all you gotta use is a reference and every feather will uh, come out perfectly. So that's one way I do it. You know, it's a little bit more tedious, but once you have this, all you gotta do is measure up. And if you wanna see, um, as soon as I put this up to the feather, uh, to my old bustles, you know, it looks perfect for every single feather. But that's why I use these. But this one, you know, I'm just gonna tape up just for the show. Um, the vinyl tape, my trade secret, where I get these is from, uh, usually from sign companies. Uh, I'll go into a sign company and a lot of them that make signs, you know, that got actually cut out letters, uh, they'll have scraps. And I usually just go out there and uh, like, hey, do you have any scraps you might, you know, that you don't want, or you know, um, I'll pay you 20 bucks, you know, for any of your scraps. And most of the time, they're more than happy to give them to me. So I usually walk out with, you know, boxes full of just scraps with a very cool tape. I usually get gold metallics, you know, chrome and everything else, and fluorescence too. So that is where I get my tape jobs and uh, stuff like that. So. This, uh, this tape works really well, you know, once it, um, I guess, touches itself, it, it, uh, the adhesive like works perfect. So what I'm gonna do is just pull this off and I wanna push this right about where the feather is. So I'm gonna put it, like pull it up a little bit and I'm just going to wrap it around. And I've done this so long much that, you know, I, you kind of start with one side and move to the other. Um, that way, you know, you try not to get as any wrinkles out of it. You want to get a perfectly flush tape job. And there we go. Now it's pretty flush. Now this bottom part is going to, it kind of doesn't stick too well, but that's where we're going to actually add our, our bottom to. So you don't really have to worry about that too much. But that's where we get it. And from here, I'm going to show you how to get my bottoms. Um, one of my trade secrets is uh, the very bottom pieces, which I attach the feathers to, is I use a lot of zip ties. Zip ties, uh, I found, you know, really works well because they're plastic, pretty durable, and, you know, they're cheap, you know, and if I have to replace them, all I got to do is cut, like, uh, my, um, my thread work that I've attached it with and add a new one in, which takes probably, like, less than three minutes to do. So, I've got here, right here, is uh, some um, zip ties, the actual long piece, that I've already chopped up. Now, I've chopped these up and usually I keep them just because I do a lot of bustles. And, you know, um, I'm not even sure what the measurement is on this. I kind of just eyeball it and then if I measure this one, it's a little bit, it's a little off, but it's a little over an inch and a half. So about inch and three quarters. You might want to make them a little bit longer, but all I got to do is just bend this in half. And I like to bend them where they kind of touch. And there, now you got a little like a bend to it. And now all I need is my twine. This is also called, uh, I think when you actually shop for it, uh, crochet something, whatever. I'm not for sure, but I, I use it a lot and I found that, you know, that I pretty much use it for all my bustles. The cool part is it comes in different colors. Uh, this one I got green. I'm just gonna go with all green on this one and um, let my brother do his own tape job. So, but I'm gonna keep it uniform with the green. Um, I find this at Hobby Lobby. Um, Although Walmart, the last one I went to, quit selling it for some reason. I don't know why. So I'm going to ban Walmart from here on out if I can. But uh, <laughs> here on out, you know, this is a crochet. Um, there comes in different sizes. It comes in a tin, which is kind of a smaller thread. I like to use a three. The three is a little bit thicker, and I find that, you know, I can do my thread work a little bit faster. So um, I kind of like, that's kind of one of my, like, little cheat sheets right there is use the kind of the bigger thread. So it takes up more space, and it's actually faster to use. So going forth, um, you know, I got my, um, my bottom of my zip tie, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my feather, and I'm going to bend the zip tie in half and I'm going to attach it. Um, this way I'm actually making an eyelet with this and I'm going to use my thread to attach it with. Now this probably comes from the originality of using thread maybe, I'm not sure, maybe tying on like, you know, like um, arrowheads and stuff like that I guess. I mean, but it's kind of the way I've learned how to do it is what I'll do is I'll wrap it like that and I'll throw the excess of the thread over here so I can tie a knot later and then I'll just use this. Now, 
granted, you know, a lot of bustle makers out there, you're gonna, like, you all know that right here, your finger is gonna get a little raw. I mean, it's gonna start turning into a rock. Depending on how many bustles you work, um, one year, you know, I did like, I don't, couldn't even count how many I did, but this feather got pretty rough. And sometimes I like to use a little electric tape here and there just to kind of protect my, uh, my finger. So what I do is I just start to wrap it and I kind of inch my fingers up and go all the way around and attach it. Now I'm using a lot of tension on this and that way it can get secure and very tight because I want this to stay on as long as possible. So I'm trying to, you know, the idea is that you want to use a lot of tension because, you know, you want this to be perfectly on there. And also I like to check it, make sure it's flush with the stem because if it's cockeyed or, you know, like cattywampus in a way, the, uh, it doesn't, it'll make the feather kind of bow this way or this way when you actually put all the feathers together. You want them all to be flush. Now I got it pretty tight and it's kind of, you're going to have to learn your own trick to actually tie in a knot. And so sometimes I'll use my teeth or this one I'll just use my fingers because I don't want to show me biting string on the show. So here we go and perfect knot. Now if I was at home, I'd probably be using my teeth to do that, but I gotta be proper on the show, as my director says, so I'm gonna cut it. Got a little excess, and sometimes it might be a little off. All I do is I look, I look from here and make sure it's flush. Sometimes you might have to bend it or try to rotate it just a little bit and I want to get these perfectly flush because like I said, if it's off in any way, it'll actually stick up like this or it'll stick that way when you actually interlace with all the feathers together. And it's a little off. Another cool trick is you can also use a screwdriver. This one has like a little stem. I just stick that in there and kind of twist it and it'll start to move it. Now I got it perfectly uh, flush the way I want it and all I'm going to do now, I didn't actually uh, have tacky glue. I prefer tacky glue. It's kind of in a brown bottle with some gold letters on it. I like that kind of glue, but today on the show, I have Elmer's glue. And working here at the Tribe, I had to go to Head Start, and um, I stole this from the Head Start when uh, they weren't looking. Um, I stole it from a kid that was eating it, um, but you know, he, it's better that I use it than him. So all I'm gonna do, I don't really like to use the little, the little I guess the little tops. So I'm just gonna like douse my finger with it. And I imagine this tasted pretty good to that kid because he was gnawing on it. So all I'm gonna do is wet my finger and we're just gonna like submerge it in the glue and wrap it around and we're gonna let it like dry for a little bit. But you just wanna get really, really saturated. Cause like I said, you know, you want this to uh, stay on there forever. And the glue will harden and once it hardens, you know, it's gonna be Perfect. So wrap it around, saturate it, and we're almost done from here on out. All we got to do is uh, pierce the side of here, and then we're going to interlace it with some uh, with some um, another thread. And uh, what I like to do is actually put beads in here, just kind of space out the feathers. Um, so here in this deck segment, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now we have come to the most important part of bustle making. Uh, it's what I call, I'm not sure what the word is for it, but I call it piercing. Uh, we're going to pierce the side of the feather and go all the way through it. Um, like I said, you know, this is a cool part um, from the, the style that I do it. As a lot of people like to jab like, you know, dowel rods all the way through it, but since I didn't go all the way through it, it's hollow. It's a whole lot easier to do because, you know, all you got to do is pierce one side, pierce the other side. Now, I've done this before, and a long time ago, I, I used to use a drill bit. You know, I used to go through it and drill it. I found that it weakens the feather, so I don't like to use that anymore. And that came from a lot of mistakes that I used to do. So I don't like to use any drill bits anymore, no drills or anything. I like to go old style and actually use a, um, an awl. Cool trick that I've learned as working with this, you know, with the stems, is if you heat this up with a lighter, um, it goes through almost like butter. And the cool part is, you know, like if I were to pierce it just with the awl itself, it could crack the stem and actually cause a crack, which later on could go all the way down the stem, damaging the stem, and you might have to do some repair work. So what I like to do is I like to take my lighter here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat the stem up. And I'm going to get uh, the, the pretty hot, 
you know, pretty warm. And when I do that, it's just going to, you know, it'll pierce it right through. Now, before I do that, um, piercing these feathers, you know, like this is one way I like to do it. I, uh, I like to pierce right close to like where this feather starts. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people go here and here, but I like to get it like a little uniform here. Now, fancy hands bustles, you might want to go a little bit further, just depending on the style that you want to do. Uh, but for this traditional bustle, since I'm not having a lot of room to work with, I'm just going to go right here. Now, if you're making fancy dance bustles, you don't want to keep the stem way out there because after a while, it, it, the density of it, 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 it tends to weaken. And plus, dancing fancy, you know, you're always jumping around. It could snap one of these really easily. And you don't want to drop one of these eagle feathers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pierce this kind of up high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up, get this all nice and hot. Get it sterilized, and it looks like it's getting pretty hot. Now I can give myself some tattoos, and all right, all right, all right. There. Now it looks pretty hot. I'm going to keep it as hot as I can get it. And I'm just going to, I want to keep it straight and see how it went perfectly through. I'm still eyeballing it straight all the way through. And see, so it comes through. And like I said, you know, like once it's hot, it goes through really easy, just like that. And you don't have to worry about it cracking the stem and stuff like that. And I think the heat actually gives it a little density. It gives it a little strength too. So I'm going to make sure it goes through on both sides. And now we have a perfect uh, eyelet right there. Um, now all we've got to do is interlace it with, uh, with my other uh, thread and put some be uh, beads in, uh, in there for spacers. You're going to be doing this for every single feather. So now we're going to do a little close-up on showing how to interlace the bustle. At the bottom, you see I actually interlace it with a shoestring. This keeps the bustle together, and you know, once you tie it tight, it holds the uh, bustle and, um, at the very bottom uh, together. Um, here at the very top, I'm going to interlace uh, my thread, um, actually spacing out with different size beads. Now, the feathers that I'm working with are different sizes. Um, eagle feathers are kind of known for that. So what I do is um, I usually use to lace them up with two to three to one style of beads, depending on the size of the feather. This kind of gives me the form and the shape that I'm looking for. So once I tie the knot at the very top, what I like to do is I like to lace another piece of um, string. Um, that way I can tie it onto the backboard's uh, poles. Uh, this will actually, you can bend these poles and actually shape the backboard um, to give the bustle a different kind of shape that is desired. Um, that's pretty much what I do with all the styles of bustles that I make. Okay, now we'll come to the part where we're going to actually, well, if you see, I've already interlaced some of this already, so, but it's very simple. Take my pony beads, which I find, um, you know, most craft stores. Um, these ones are easier to find. I'm just going to go with the easy white color. Now, one thing I do as far as bustle making, um, I like to put a lot of beads in there. Uh, this way, um, that way when I actually do fine tune it and shape it, all I can do is I take my handy dandy uh, needle nose and I'll bust beads to get a perfect shape. So go ahead and put, you know, like four beads, three beads in there. It's going to look crazy at the very beginning. I'm, I mean, trust me, it's going to not, it's not going to look right, but I only do that for a purpose because once I start putting it up, uh, I don't tie everything down like or fine tune it, but it allows me to fine tune because I can actually bust the beads and get the shape that I want. So um, going with this, you know, like the top ones, I'm only going to use two beads. I've already done three beads down here, but I'm still going to get the shape of it. So that's one thing you have to look at. And one thing I did forget to mention is uh, sometimes I like to do one side of the feathers. So I'll, so I'll do one side of the wings uh, as far as the extension, and then I'll go back and reference it to the other side. That way they're uniform. So what I'll do is, uh, if you look, this one is the exact same feather as this one, but it's the opposite. But it looks perfectly, and it actually lines up perfectly at the tips. So if you look, the length is perfectly the same, and they're all sequential. So every single feather is equal to its brother. That's why I like to call those brothers. So um, each feather, you know, uh, is the same size as his brother. Now all I'm going to do is just interlace this with uh, the hole that we pierced. And at the bottom, the, the eyelet that we made with uh, the zip ties, I'm going to use that for my base string. And all we do is pierce that through, and bam. Now we're almost finished. Sometimes I'll tie one side over here, that way I get a little bit of structure. But from there, I'm going to put this on the backboard, 
and we're going to fine tune it the way I want it to shape. Like I said, I've got a little bit more, uh, more beads in here than I actually would when I'm fine tuning it, but that's how this one we're going to go from there is we're going to start busting beads. That's the fun part. So now we'll come to my favorite part. This one is where the beads are going to fly everywhere. Um, what I'm looking for is I look at our finished product here. It's almost our finished product, but I look for the gaps between the feathers. Um, one thing is you have to shape these feathers back and forth. You can bend them up and down. But um, after the finger feathers, the kind of the top fingers, there's kind of like a little gap between here. And that's what I'm kind of looking for. I want to get these uniform. So all I'm going to do is take my needle nose and then I'm going to bust some beads. I'm not shoot myself in the face. And then I'm just going to push them down and then I'm going to see how that lays. This is what I call fine tuning like a bustle. You kind of just pull the string and once it's knotted on one side, you know, you can work with it and just pull it until it actually tightens up. And I want to get a good space between there. I don't want to get them too bunched up because I want everyone to see the vibrant colors of, you know, feathers. So I'm just going to space them out, keep spacing, and I'm going to look and I'm going to try to make them uniform on both sides. But this also will give me my, the cup that I have. You know, like that's what it kind of bows out to. So I'm going to go through and start busting some beads right here. And then here in a minute, I'm going to show you what it looks like when I'm done. So here I go. Come on. This is like the best part of actually making bustles. So I'm just busting beads and pushing it down. The more I bust uh, beads, the better the cup's going to get. There's one right there. Now when it comes to the finished product, uh, you know, this is going to be our round bustle. I got a little bit more shaping to do, so I'm going to do that. Um, sometimes, uh, just remember when you actually shape your feathers, you can actually bend these out, you know, bend these back and forth uh, gently, uh, and it'll actually get the, the feather to stay. So I'm going to do some more shaping. Um, I have a finished product here for a little bit. I think on the next episode, we're going to start doing some backboard, so I'll show you how to construct a backboard for your bustles. Um, you can use a lot, utilize that for fancy dance bustles, traditional bustles, and, you know, pretty much what other uh, bustles you're working with. So now we're at the conclusion of our show. I want to thank everyone out there for tuning in with me, Joaquin Lone Launch, here on Making Regalia. I'm bringing you more shows that I'm uh, coming up with, and I want to thank everyone out there uh, with Powells.com and Facebook for giving us likes. Uh, once again, thank you for tuning in. Ha ho. Making Regalia is made possible in part by War Child Society, designers of native apparel, t-shirts, decals, and more. War Child Society, more savage than average. Visit warchildsociety.com to learn more.